Aaron, are you sure you heard something out here? I literally just sat down to start cleaning guns, and there was immediately a knocking sound directly to my right. I know I heard it. Contact, I contact, coming here, get it. I see something, I see something. There it is, there it is. <laughs> Told you I heard something. You were right, man. Think these are safe for dogs to eat? I wouldn't, man. Welcome back to the channel, Den members. Sorry about that. Aaron just got in town because we're going to join up with Steve to go find Darren. And we apparently have a little bit of a gummy infestation around my home now. So that's fun. About four months ago, I did a review on Amazon bought night vision for cheap. We're talking a couple hundred dollars for something that resembles night vision. The device that I reviewed specifically was the Night Fox Swift headset. I did not provide that stellar of a review on this headset. Yes, it technically works, but would I really want to use this? And did I really find it terribly useful for a lot of the scenarios in which you would use it for? No. If you haven't seen it already and you wanna check out that video, the video link is right here. So imagine my surprise when I open up my email one morning and I find an email from Night Fox themselves. Somehow they stumbled across my video and they asked if I would be interested in reviewing one of their new upcoming products, the Swift 2, the successor to the Night Fox Swift. To everyone at Night Fox, forgive me for appropriating a phrase here, I am absolutely chuffed to bits. And we'll just do a full disclosure here and now on this. I did not purchase this Swift 2 headset. You can't even buy this in the United States as of the time of filming. I believe those of us in the States will be able to get a hold of these in early November. Hey everyone, this just in. I was just on Amazon and I noticed that the Swift 2 and the Swift 2 Pro are now actually on sale. And with Prime, I'm able to get one by the time this video goes up on Friday. I'm not sure if that's correct or if that's a fluke on Amazon's part, but just want to call out that the Swift 2 and the Swift 2 Pro are now on sale for $199.99 on Amazon here in the United States. That said, I am not being further compensated for this review other than being told I can keep this headset. I was told to please be unbiased and completely honest in my review, whether it's good or bad. I can already imagine the comments down in the comment section. Fake! Shill! He's been bought off! He's not real anymore! Boo! With all that out of the way, let's do a comparison of the Swift and the Swift 2 headsets. We'll start with overall design and get down into the more technical nitty gritty details as we go. The Swift 2 retains the overall aesthetic of the Swift with just a few differences. The bottom of the headset is quite a bit chunkier than the Swift. We'll get into that. The only other real difference in looks between the Swift 2 and the Swift 1 is the new eyepiece, the new eye shade on the Swift 2. This is a softer, more pliable rubber, and they've added a bit of an accordion style into it so that it's more comfortable and can more easily block out light and block light from escaping around the eyes. Other than that, as I said, it really does retain the overall aesthetic, the original shape of the original Swift. Out of the box, the Swift 2 comes with the same accessories that came with the Swift, plus one little extra. It comes with a neck strap, which can attach to either side of the headset. It comes with a head mount strap, but with the Swift 2, they included standard, the dovetail, to be able to mount to a lot of bump helmet mounting systems. This was something that you had to buy separately with the Swift. I do see this plastic dovetail as being a potential weak link, a weak point in the system. For the average user, it's going to be just fine. However, if it's put in a more aggressive 
hostile environment, whatever that may look like, I can see this getting broken, chipped. Maybe in the future, Night Fox will release an aluminum made dovetail. Let's actually talk about the internals the functionality and the improvements of the Swift 2 over the Swift. Like I said at the beginning of this video, I was not terribly impressed with the original Swift. If you were using it in any kind of tactical situation where you needed to maintain a stealth presence, the IR emitters let off a very visible red light. That ruins any element of stealth you may hope to have with a night vision headset. I also talked about the screen feeling very low resolution and a bit grainy and there being quite a bit of motion blur that while not nauseating, did make it difficult to track objects when either they were on the move or you yourself were on the move. Night Fox has addressed a lot of that. So let's start out with the camera and the screen. The Swift 2 has a bigger screen at 480 by 360 resolution. Whereas the original Swift had a 40 degree viewing angle, the Swift 2 has a 50 degree viewing angle. That's something that I noticed right off the bat when I first got this. The viewing angle and just the picture quality is honestly markedly better than the Swift. Moving on to the infrared, the night vision technology that's in the Swift 2, it's more refined and there's a big upgrade. When you first turn on the headset, it is in regular viewing, so daytime viewing mode. Hitting the infrared up button once will put it into what is now called the lunar sight mode. This is just using the ambient light with the infrared and you can see with just ambient light. Hitting the infrared up button again, like the Swift, will then activate the infrared emitters. The original Swift headset was equipped with two 850 nanometer infrared emitters. The wavelength of 850 nanometers, especially at a high amplitude, is quite visible to the human naked eye. That causes a real problem if you're trying to stay hidden. What the Swift 2 has done to overcome this is actually really interesting. The right hand side emitter is now a 940 nanometer emitter. This makes it far less visible to the naked eye. You can see that it is showing red. You're going to have to trust me that this is nowhere near as visible by the naked eye as it is on camera. The only way that the naked eye, my naked eye can see this when pointed at me is if it's in absolute dark and even then I have to be looking for it. If we turn the IR setting up to levels four or five, it deactivates the right hand 940 nanometer emitter and it activates the left hand 850 nanometer. This is the same emitter that is in the original Swift. A higher intensity will allow a greater viewing distance. Night Fox says that the new Swift 2 will operate out to 130 yards. I haven't tried it out that far. I will say that the viewing distance is greater and more reliable than the original Swift. I don't know if I would push this past 100 yards. Whereas on the original Swift, you could adjust the backlighting of the screen. You can also now access through kind of an on-screen mini menu, the exposure of the camera. That means you can control the amount of light that is being taken in by the camera. Therefore, in a darker environment, you can see Further. There's going to be more contrast in the viewing area. On top of the viewing screen mini menu, there's now a full settings menu. The most useful setting that I have changed on my headset is the infrared setting. You can go into the menu and disable one or both of the infrared emitters. I personally like to have the 850 nanometer wavelength disabled. That said, you can disable the 940 nanometer one and only use the 850 or you can just disable 
disable the infrared altogether and only use the lunar sight. I'll call out that the headset does have a 3x digital zoom. Personally, I don't think that the headset needs a zoom feature, but it is there. Now in the intro, you'll see that the footage was filmed with a green filter. There is a setting in the menu where you can set the filter instead of being black and white like your traditional infrared camera to a green and black filter like traditional green phosphor night vision goggles. I was of the mind that this was an absolute gimmick added by Night Fox to help people slip more into an immersive experience. Having now used the Swift 2 and going back and forth between the black and white and the green and black, I have convinced myself that it is purely a placebo effect, but I 100% prefer the green filter. Maybe it's because the green light is less harsh and is not as stark of a contrast on your eyes as the white and black, but I just prefer the green and black. The last feature and improvement of the Swift 2 over the original Swift is actually the battery. I mentioned earlier that the bottom of the Swift 2 is considerably bulkier than the original Swift. That's because it now comes with a replaceable, rechargeable lithium ion battery. That means that Night Fox realized that, you know, as the batteries in these original devices go bad, this entire thing becomes useless. We want this to outlast the battery. A replaceable battery in a modern tech device is proof that a company cares about their consumer. They don't want to have this be trash or a doorstop or a piece of furniture on a shelf someday. They want this to remain usable. Thank you. Before I get into my overall thoughts of the Swift 2, there is an issue that I actually helped discover with this device. If you go into the menu on this device, there is an option that says frame rate. If you go in, you are presented with two options, 30 frames per second and 60 frames per second. By default, 30 FPS is selected. For any consumer that buys the first production of the Swift 2 or the Swift 2 Pro, if you select 60 FPS in the menu, the device will lock up. You will have to do a hard reset. There's a tiny little pinhole that you just press in and it'll do a hard reset on the device. I'm told that they're going to notify anyone that purchases a Swift 2 not to select 60 FPS. And if they do, they'll say how to reset it with the pinhole reset button. For people that purchase the Swift 2 Pro model, because it has a micro SD card slot, they're going to be working on a firmware update for all existing units. So with that PSA out of the way, let's get on to my overall thoughts. With the Swift 2 and the improvement to the IR emitters, I can honestly say that I can see myself actually using this device in an any number of given circumstances. Whether it's early morning hiking to where I'm going to post up when I hunt this winter, whether it's nightlife observation, or I hesitate to say this, but I can honestly see this being used in a very, very limited tactical situation. For airsoft, paintball, absolutely, I can see this being used. I would 100% recommend this product for anybody that's airsofting or is paintballing at night. When it comes to home defense, I don't think that we are quite there yet. There is still a motion blur, both when viewing a moving target or you yourself are moving. I can say that it will work well with a laser pointer. Make of that what you will. Now, if you're doing something more like hiking or scouting or heck, let's even go with reconnaissance, this is going to work. And at a price point of $200, I don't think you're going to get anything better than this. And that's what it boils down to. Can this replace true white 
or green phosphor night vision goggles? No. For $200, is this a budget facsimile of night vision technology? Absolutely. Does this get my overall recommendation? Yeah, but with the caveat that you're not getting this for self-defense. I would 100% buy this with my own money, but I hesitate to say that this would be deployed in a situation where my life is in immediate danger. Again, I wanna thank Night Fox for sending over the Swift 2. It's really neat to see some company from the UK supporting a small YouTuber from the rebel colonies. But really, thank you for giving the Phantom Llamas Den the opportunity to do a review on this. And to all of our viewers, I hope you found this video helpful or at the very least entertaining. All right, Steve's here, Aaron's ready. We're gonna go rescue Darren. That's gonna do it for this video, everybody. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please consider hitting the like button and commenting down below. Subscribe to the Phantom Llamas Den and hit the bell icon to get notifications on future content. Come follow us on X, formerly known as Twitter. And as always, don't take life too seriously and make it a great day.